In this lesson, you will learn how to identify the mean, median, and mode using a stem and leaf plot. Let's begin by discussing stem and leaf plots in general. A stem and leaf plot, as I've shown here below, is a type of graph that plots data points in horizontal rows based on place value. The stem is the left-hand section of the graph you see here. The stem collects and groups the first digits of all the data points. In this case, you see two digits here, which means that the data is collected by hundreds and tens. So this is the first two digits of each data value. Then the right-hand side of the plot is called the leaf, and the leaf contains the last digit of each data point. So if the hundreds and tens are in the stem, then the last digit here is the ones. Now anytime you see two digits in the leaf, it means that there are two data points that have the same exact value, or they have the same stem. So this could be 111, or let's just say there are two values, 111, 111 occurs again, and then maybe something like that. This would be 112, and it would go in the same row because the first two digits are the same for all of these numbers. Now let's take a look at a problem, and we'll use a stem and leaf plot to get some answers about the data. Here's the situation. Max wants to see how healthy the drinks are in his school's vending machine. At the beginning of the year, Max records the calories of each drink in the machine. In October, an extra large bottle of soda containing 306 calories was added to the machine. So now let's take a look at this in a stem and leaf plot so we can see Max's data. So here's the plot, and as you can see, this stem and leaf plot looks a little bit different than the one we discussed in the intro. And this is because two different data sets are being compared side by side. So the first data set I'll highlight in yellow. So this is the calories in each drink in October. And then the next data set I'm going to highlight in blue. And this contains the calories in each drink that were in the vending machine at the beginning of the year. So what this means that instead of the stem being on one side and the leaf being on the other, the stem becomes this middle area here and the leaf for one data set is on the left and the leaf for the other data set is on the right. Now I want to draw your attention to one more thing about this. As you know, the situation told us that in October a new drink containing 306 calories was added to the vending machine. This value is right here at the bottom. So there's a 3 in the hundreds place, a 0 in the tens place, and a 6 in the ones place under the October leaf. So this is the data point for the extra large bottle of soda. Other than that, all of the other data points above this value are the same. Nothing else changed, just this last data point in October. So what we're going to do is compare these two data sets, and we're going to begin finding the mean, median, and mode of each set, and we will investigate how the additional point in October affects these measures of central tendency. Let's start with the information from the start of the school year. So we'll begin by finding the mean, and what I've done is I've taken all of the data values off of the right hand leaf so from this section of the stem and leaf plot and I've written them out as a large addition sentence because to find the mean you want to add all of the data values together and then you want to divide by the total number of data points that you have so after you add all these values together you get a sum total of 1241 now there are nine data values so we're going to divide that sum by nine Upon doing this division, you get 137.9. So this is 137.9 calories is the mean number of calories in each drink. Next, let's talk about the median. Now to find the median, we already have the data values listed out in numerical order. So what you start is you, you want to cross off pairs of values because the median is the value that falls directly in the middle of the data set. So you start crossing off values like so and you do it in pairs until you're left with one or two in the middle. This time we're left with one, so this is our median. The median is 136. Now let's talk about the mode. The mode is the most frequent value that appears. So if an, a value appears more than once, and let's just say it appears twice, then that's your mode. Now as you go through this data, the only value that repeats is right here. Two cans of soda or two of the drinks in the vending machine have 111 calories. So that means the mode of the data set is 111. Now let's talk about these different measures of central tendency for October now. 
Again, we'll begin by finding the mean. So what I've done is written out all of the data values for October. As you can see, we have an extra data point here, which is 306 calories. When you find the total of this data, you get a grand total of 1,547. Now in this case, if we want to find the mean, we have to divide by the total number of data points. And October has one more data point than the start of the year. So what you're going to do is divide 1,547 by 10. Upon doing this division, you get the value of 154.7. So the mean number of calories now is 154.7. Now let's talk about the median. Again, we're looking for the middle value of this data. Begin crossing off pairs of data points until you are left with one or two. Here we go. Keep crossing off. OK, so now we get down to two data values. And what we're going to do is find the average of these two data values to find the median. When you have an even number in your data set, this is what will happen. You will come down to two values in the middle, and you want to find the average of these two to get the median. So median will be 136 plus 139, and we'll put that in parentheses, and you're going to divide that by 2. 136 plus 139 is 275, and when you divide that by 2, you get 137.5. So this is the median of the October data set. And lastly, we'll talk about mode. And the only value that repeats in this data set is still 111. So we've got that. Now, let me show you a table that summarizes all the work that we just did. So we've got the data for the beginning of the school year here in the first column. And then we've got the data for October in the second column. And we're categorizing, we have mean, median, and mode. What I want to do now is I want to talk about how the extra value in October affected the data and affected all of these measures that we just solved, mean, median, and mode. So the extra data point for October was the value 306. Now this value was far away from the other values. If you recall, the rest of the values started, so they were in the 100s, okay, all of the other drinks had calories in the 100 somewhere. 306 is pretty far away. What we call this data point is an outlier because it is so far away from the rest of the data. And let's see how this outlier affected the mean, median, and mode. First, let's take a look at the mean. We have 137 calories on average in the beginning of the school year, and then in October we have 154.7. Having this high outlier pulled the mean almost just shy of 20 calories higher. So that outlier is dragging the mean up because the outlier is so much higher than the rest of the data. Next, let's take a look at the median. Now the median changed a little bit. So we went from 136 to 137.5. The median was moved over just a little bit, but honestly, this is only 1.5 calories more in October. So what that means is that an outlier doesn't have a great effect on the median. Now let's look at the mode. The mode, in both cases, is 111. Now, outliers do not affect the mode. As you can see, the mode did not change at all. Since Max is trying to determine how healthy the drinks are in the vending machine, let's talk about which measures of center would be most appropriate to answer this question. Now that you know how an outlier affects these measures of center, you want to choose the appropriate measurement given what Max is solving for and which data set he is using. So if we want to find out how many calories are in each drink, about how many calories are in each drink on average, at the start of the year versus October, we need to choose between the mean, median, and mode to answer this question. So again, we're looking for the about how many calories does each drink have in the vending machine. Now, if we're talking about the beginning of the school year, right, the most reliable measure of center for that would be the mean. And so for talking about the beginning of the school year, then we're going to use the mean. The reason we're not going to use the mode, for example, the mode just tells you how many times a certain data value occurs. So this just means that there are two types of drinks in the vending machine that have 111 calories. Or maybe this is the most popular, so that's why there's two of them. This doesn't tell us how healthy, on average, the drinks are in the vending machine. 
Now let's talk about which measure of center he would use if he were using the data from October. We know that the data in October was very skewed because of this outlier 306 calories, and we know that the outlier greatly affected the mean. So if Max is trying to figure out how healthy the drinks are on average, he shouldn't use the mean for October, and that's because it's been skewed by the outlier. It's been pulled up higher than it ought to be. Again, we're not going to use the mode because this still just represents how frequently that data point of 111 occurs. So this doesn't tell us on average or about how healthy the drinks are in the vending machine. What this leaves us with is the median. And as you can see, the median isn't that much different from the median at the beginning of the school year. Furthermore, the median is very close to the mean from the beginning of the school year, which means that this will be a more accurate representation of the majority of the drinks in the vending machine in October, which excludes or kind of minimizes the effect that this outlier has on the data. Now, which measure of center would Max use if he wanted a single number summary for how many calories most students are drinking when they buy a drink from the vending machine? He wants to know how many calories most students are drinking, and this would be the most popular or common data point. And this is the one with the highest frequency. We call that the mode. So if Max wanted to know how many calories most students are drinking, he would look to the mode. And in this case, it's 111 in both cases, so it doesn't matter if you're talking about October or the beginning of the school year. In this lesson, we've learned how to interpret stem and leaf plots. And we've practiced finding measures of center. Thanks for watching.